Paul and Paul, you keep talking about that that pinwheel that's right behind mm. you. It, it just looks ominous out there. Yeah, it's an impressive looking system. And the more organized something is in the atmosphere, the kind of more stark it looks, even to people who aren't used to observing these kind of maps. And it's easy to pick out that this is a really powerful looking storm system, the center of which is pretty much directly over San Francisco right now, but it's having a wide impact on the entire state. Heavy rain, high winds being directed to Southern California as well. There is an atmospheric river associated with this storm system. It's just not pointed towards the Bay Area. That is pointed hundreds of miles down the coast towards Southern California. So this is falling below that threshold for us, believe it or not. But the high winds and heavy rain are going to continue to be a factor as we head through the rest of this evening. Take a look at all of the watches and warnings that are in effect because of this major storm system across the state. The green are all of the flood warnings. We have red indicating the high wind warnings extend all along the coast. We have the brown shaded areas indicating wind advisories. It's one category below a high wind warning. And then winter weather advisories in the high Sierra. This is just another in a parade of storm systems that has led to a remarkable winter and now early spring. First full day of spring is bringing this mess to the Bay Area. Let's zoom in for a closer look at where the heaviest rain is falling. There's this arc of heavy rain that extends from Vacaville through northern in Napa County and back towards Santa Rosa. You were on the edge of the rain, but this band of rain is lifting to the north because the parent storm system, that heart of low pressure, is actually drifting to the north right now. Eventually, it's going to get pushed the other way, but for right now, there's nothing big in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It's shoving this thing around, so it's just going to kind of go wherever it wants to spin. Eventually, it's going to spin back off the coast and then head down to our south, but that's going to take several more hours. We have heavy rain that is falling for most of the inland East Bay Valleys and on the Oakland side of the Oakland Hills as as well. Some torrential rain falling for the evening commute. It is a mess out there once again, and there are more bands of heavy rain that extend down the peninsula. Santa Clara Valley seeing plenty of rain as well as from moderate to heavy rain around San Jose with the heaviest rain falling in the higher elevations down the peninsula into the Santa Cruz Mountains, where you've already had numerous issues because of wind damage. You can see that funnel of moisture is just going to continue surging in from the Pacific, distinctly concerned about the potential for more flooding for southern San Mateo County and into Santa Cruz County, where the terrain is just going to be more efficient at squeezing out additional moisture. We'll switch over to Futurecast, and it kind of keeps that hose pointed at the peninsula and the Santa Cruz Mountains as we head through the rest of this evening and even into much of tonight. There's going to be plenty of lingering shower activity tomorrow morning, the whole storm system is going to be losing some of its organization as we head through the rest of tonight. These things don't just maintain themselves in perpetuity, but it is still going to be strong enough to give us noticeable breeze and some lingering showers to begin the day Wednesday. But the wind will be less of a factor and even the showers should be shutting down as we head towards midday on Wednesday. Then we get a chance to catch our breath. There's a hint of a shower chance north of the Golden Gate on Thursday. We're not concerned about that at this point. Something we'll be able to kind of hone in on once we get past this system. Them. Total additional rainfall, and here's why we're concerned about the peninsula and the Santa Cruz Mountains. That would be just way too much. The one inch indicated in Half Moon Bay is too much, much less the two and a half plus inches of rain. The forecast models are pointing at for Ben Lomond. We will hope that these forecast models are just being a little bit too pessimistic, but we're going to have to watch for more flooding issues in addition to more wind damage. Elsewhere across the Bay Area, another quarter inch to half inch of rain in general, maybe some spots picking up closer to three quarters of an inch. 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts are going to be widespread, gradually diminishing. Our high wind warning and our wind advisory expire at 9, 8, 9 p.m., but it's still going to be breezy out there by 11 o'clock this evening. By tomorrow morning, that wind is going to be lighter, still stirring around, but the strongest gusts will be around 20 miles an hour. That's a whole lot lighter than what we've seen today, and the wind will be less of a factor as we head through the rest of the day tomorrow. And in the Sierra, finally, to put a bow on this system, a winter weather advisory continues until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Total of snow accumulation at lake level is going to be around 4 to 8 inches, but they're going to pick up a couple of feet in the higher elevations. Low temperatures tonight dropping down into the mid to upper 40s, which is very close to our current temperatures in most locations. Not much of a warm up, even once the showers wind down and we dry out tomorrow afternoon, only upper 50s, the warmest spots around 60 degrees. And we have a four day stretch of dry weather looking likely Thursday through the weekend in Thursday, outside chance of shower for the North Bay. But even dry weather won't be warm weather. We're going to stay in the mid to upper 50s to around 60 with yet another storm system headed our way Monday night into Tuesday of next week.